Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here, the guy with the best MMA versus Aikido video on all of YouTube, as well as the Steven Seagal uh, Above the Law remake or Above the Law reboot, Under Siege reboot video. You should go check out with myself doing everything in place of my bio daddy, Steven. We did bounce at the very same bar. Well, he worked at as a dishwasher. I did bounce at the very same bar. And as a actual martial expert, martial arts expert unlike you know that blue belt guy a guy with four black belts that fought in pro mma i'm the guy uh who's going to be able to break down the jesse m cap and steven seagal video here you see his uke i believe that is kirill about to lunge at him i believe this is from team nogara dubai at team nogara dubai so we see uh i believe it's kirill um the uke here charging at steven seagal i'm gonna hit him was time to with that nasty Irimi Nagi, famous in all his movies for that clothesline technique. Finally, feel the power of Steven Seagal. Yeah. This kind of a strike is Ooh. Like and here we see Steven breaking a board with a little backhand. You know, Dan the Wolfman's used that little bakwash backhand and used it to rotate heads around for biomechanic takedown defense hands first biomechanic takedown defense you might want to look at that video as well as my anti-cage tactics twisting heads to get off the cage throat shoves that guys have used very successfully against better wrestlers like Nagano did and others have done like Barboza did um, so you guys might want to check that out let's see what else Sensei Seagal has up his sleeve. This is my fighting pose. Yeah. And from here, I might do this. Boom! Right there. I've already... Right there, dead. Already killed you, man. Right there. I think all of us kind of used to... Oh, man. Right there. Chop you in the throat, man. So I think that was a little Elvis. Chop to the throat, kill him right there technique. Of course, hitting someone in the throat can be very effective, which you will learn on my four and a half hours, highly rated combative street jiu-jitsu DVD, available on BJJ Fanatics. It killed you, but I have this now. Ah. So here, door, yeah, all four fingers, Come around all here, four is allowed in MMA. And look here, we break it. <sighs> this the Sankyo there, where he breaks it. Hard to get into, but it can be used. Uh, Remy, my friend, who very experienced bouncer and guy who goes around the world doing various real things, unlike keyboard warriors that just talk, Remy of Martial Arts One-on-One, -on -one, he said he's used Shankyo a lot in bouncing. I haven't. I'm more of a Kodagishi and Nikyo Ayadori variation guy. If you look at M uh, Aikido versus MMA video, look at mine. It really is the best on all of you, too. To snap off, and I can't move. And then from here, I can move them around from mm -hmm. here. This is good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see him juggling around, being able to manipulate the guy with all his different lock flow series of Akido. Um, and you know, the man is very, very skilled. Yeah. I can also walk him around like this. <laughs> yep, that was like end this. Up above the law. That little kick and four arm bar in there. Yeah. Okay, let's look at that. Let's rewind that a bit. Hopefully that doesn't mess it up too bad. Like this. Mm. Punches. And I throw him. Yeah. Throw punches at him. If he doesn't go. Gets off the center I line. Now in the and throws him with Kodagishi. Kodagishi is the most useful Aikido technique. And you can look at my top three Aikido techniques that all martial artists and first responders and medical personnel should learn. Another popular video where you'll learn quite a bit. And you see his yeah. left hand over his right. People normally will not. I sometimes go right over left because I practice the Sue position for firearms. But perhaps Sensei Seagal wants to be able to fend an instant grab attack, a close attack, a knife attack to be able to draw his 1911. So perhaps he's protecting the right hand being his primary hand to get to a 1911 underneath his left hand. Punch you like this. Right. They normally won't punch you like this. They'll punch you like this. Haymaker. Right? Kind That's of, right. Yeah. So as he comes, you'll notice something very different. Uh huh. This in sword is called ukinagash. So you see that he's saying that usually a guy's going to throw a haymaker and not a straight punch. That's very much true. How well this blending, I call this the rising sun block against the haymaker, works out. 
I don't know. I've shown that as defense uh, against an elbow. And if a guy keeps maybe driving to the cage and kneeing you and elbowing you like Matt Brown, someone like that, and he's throwing that elbow over and over again, you can time it on the third one for a elbow a rising sun block to a throw because it lifts their weight. I showed that back in 2012. So he's basically doing the same thing there against the haymaker and blending with the attack or Akido being the tea, tea cup lid to fit the teapot. And that's really the goal of Akido, the blending, the harmonizing with the opponent's attack. So when the sword comes down, I'll show you yep. him. You see the sword? Yep. This is a sword. Ah. So this is when I suddenly realized what we were... Okay, now look at him here. Is he blended with and got behind the attacker? Of course you do. Principles and concepts. Always want to get behind the attacker if at all possible. Getting to the blind side or the dark side. And you see right away he's got this head tilt. I believe, uh, uh, you know, the video footage I in that little video against the punches I did for Rokas years ago, you see that that was a somewhat very, uh, that technique came out of me quite a few times against somewhat alive punches, not the quickest retractions, not a pro boxer, but good stuff. And we learned some things, particularly the Seagull salute against the jab to the head tilt can be very effective. We're actually practicing. Because up until this we'll point, I thought there. he was just showing us random brutal techniques. But it turns out these... Now look what Seagal did there to kick out the knee and come down on the foot. Now if you stomp down hard here, especially if your opponent has boots on, like Combat Sambo, now as the opponent falls, there could actually be an ankle break there because of the, the not very good give from a stiff boot. So he kicked the knee out there and you see Seagal's left foot on um, Jesse Encap's left foot there. And if he did fall all the way, you have to be careful with this. You might spot me doing a lot of that even in movies, even as the robot Metro in the movie Real Steel. Didn't he step on the foot, staple that foot? Yeah, yeah, he did. I wonder who the stunt the stunt guy was that was really the motion capture guy from Metro in Real Steel, the Hugh Jackman movie. I digress. Movements were meant to be used with a sword because if a samurai lost his weapon on the battlefield, he could use the exact same movement patterns with his empty hands. Kicking. I don't always agree with that. That's like the Kali FMA guys that say, oh, well, you can do it empty hand. Well, they're, they're not winning any MMA bouts uh, with their empty hand Kali skills. Sorry, Kali brothers. I like Kali for outside range and inside range because when you go full contact, all that mid-range trappy, happy, disarm bullshit is bullshit. Yes. Downstairs, I wish you were there. But these guys said, wow. I know the guys that you talked that front kick to. They said, wow. No one could see it. Hmm. No one can see it because it's different. And if you want to see the best examples, what he's talking about is hiding the front kick, which I have defended him that he taught to hide it more from underneath the vision line. Something I talk about very much so in my Better Sistema versus MMA 2 video, and we'll get to that later with the vertical punch. I point out a lot of these same principles and concepts that Sensei Seagal is pointing out, including hiding that front kick and making it like a spear. I've been teaching that since at least 2012, mostly from kind of Benny the Jet, putting that into my uh, mind, that and the calf kicks, which really, I should be one of the godfathers of the calf kick, but I digress. For example, if you're here, yeah. I mean, I after all, Stephen very tree. well could yeah. be my bio you'll dad. Stephen, yeah. write me back, please. You know? Yeah. What, what I, I do try to do, want to train with you. you know, is a kick where you don't. Now that was a pretty good kick on the uke. I believe that's Krill again. Uh, the way he lifted the knee and boom, in, in, in like a spear instead of up. It's not up and it's not like a Muay Thai push kick either. A spearing front ball kick which I propagated in a lot of combinations I made back in 2012. And then we saw Conor McGregor doing it. And now we see more and more guys doing it instead of just the <gasps> push, get away from me more Muay Thai style kick with the front. Like we're seeing that rear leg spearing front ball kick, which, which he just showed. If you want to see the best examples of that, the very funny video I have, 100 ways to attack the growing for real that I taught to my former number one student, Master Ken. 
you see a lot of examples of me being able to kick from underneath, and that is very useful in combatives. And I show you what to do to follow up and take out a guy right away in my combatives of street jujitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. Don't see it. Ah, it's more like a spear. Just like the arms could be used as swords, the legs can be used as spears, just like the samurai. Yeah, just don't lift your knee. Mm. Put your foot straight there. Yeah. Oh. And now we see Jesse's brother, Oliver Ancap, who I do talk to quite a bit. I've never really talked to Jesse other than him messaging, messaging me back a couple times and uh, messages on one of my videos. But Oliver, I talked to uh, okay. I hope he does Different. So from the hip more, yes. more than the knee. And don't push him. Cut him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, because you don't Did show. Did you see the light go on when he got yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Now <laughs> Oliver's learning how to hide it underneath, see the light go on, since they see all his right. Yet again, whatever you think of the guy, he's showing some very good stuff. More importantly, concept and principles that lower level people completely miss. And that even, I'd say a B tier pro um, so far, he hopefully he'll become like A level in the future. He's still pretty young in his uh, MMA career. Oliver is getting, and he's still relying on a lot of the karate style movement, the Maya and whatnot. But as you get older, you learn you can move less and be right at that perfect Maya distance and counter and you hide your punches, hide your kicks, the stuff that I've been teaching for a long time and you see Sensei Seagull trying to convey here again, Sensei Seagull, I would like very much to train with you, sir, that very sincerely so. And I imagine like if I keep my posture the same, yeah. you won't see anything. Yeah, you don't oh. lift up like this spear. Mm -hmm. We have well, another technique that comes from sword. Kick at an angle, and we see a nice wow. Rimi Nagi comes, again. Yeah. This is the sword. Of course, that Seagal is famous for. And I'm hitting here, here, mm. or here. Yeah. With this side or this side, it doesn't matter. So when so I punch, A lot of nice neck attacks there. Mm. I'm not doing this. No. I'm... Okay, now you see this vertical punch here, which he used in above a law against the big guy that stopped him uh, after the alley fight coming through. And the guy was like, hey, boom. Now, you should watch my video on the horizontal punch versus the karate vertical punch versus the Wing Chun vertical punch. I give a lot of insights into its use there and really used it in a lot of sparring versus pros in Japan in my better Sistema versus MMA 2 sparring video. You really will see where I tried to limit my movement. I was always a movement book fighter, but I had turned 40 uh, that week, I believe. And so I was using less movement and staying right at that Maya, right on the outside of the distance. And then, bam, hitting that while well, I was doing southpaw, I think, hitting the left vertical punch over and over again against these uh, pro fighters. So there's a lot there. Now he's going to talk about the structure and alignment of the arms is what he's conveying, basically. Yeah. You feel the difference? Yes. So he's doing... This. Yes. yes. I'm doing this. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> See him move Oliver just with that little bit at the end, and he wasn't trying to punch hard. In fact, I know Seagull can punch a lot harder, where it wouldn't just be the push, but you can use punches as pushes and punches to damage, and you can do them combined, where it could have been this and going deep inside of him. Something I've talked a lot about, how Sistema deep punches and the concept of deep punches are real. What you'll see on my um, combatives and street jujitsu seminar highlights video, you'll see me hitting guys with boxing punches and it goes away after a second. And then you see other guys say, is it still there? Is it still there? Is it still there? You're being honest. They're still hurting. It's still there. That's the power of deep penetration in your strikes with stuff like that vertical punch, deep punches in the body, that spear kick, uh, lower ball, uh, front ball kick to the lower abs, etc. <laughs> Yeah, you can't tell when you're looking. It's no. way different when you feel it. <laughs> but it, it, it reminds me of the kick, because the kick is also, there's no telegraph. You right. can't really Mr. see Gold it until it's too late. Pose, mm. From the sword right. stuff, I do a lot of as he right comes, enough, but again, that's for him to block in, this is counter, in or get outside, but the or old to send maybe a be... tackle on the neck while he draws his 1911. That's right. I mean, he, or if he gets attacked, he's more worried that it we're striking, you know, might be a planting psycho the foot, trying to take grabbing him out or the throat, striking. Now look how he steps on the foot there. That's something very interesting he does over and over again. And later he describes his uh, footwork, which we'll probably get to in part two. With this. Yeah. Can you try that on Oliver so he can feel it? Because it, it doesn't matter how you come. <laughs> what a caring brother. Oliver needs to feel it. Haven't we all done that at one point in time? 
if you had brothers, of course. From here, yeah. I have you here, yeah. here, yeah. here. Yeah. You can feel yeah. Let me rewind that a you second. Here, yeah. here, Eyes, here. Throat, yeah. But there was also a little yeah. armbar yeah. in there on the body. <laughs> that no one could recognize. You need very to... few. To try that in your next fight. Would that even be legal? Some of it's not legal. Yeah, no, that's exactly. the thing. You can't do the finger stuff And yes, either. wrist locks are legal in MMA. You have all of them. I get these messages. Oh, keto's not legal. Wrist locks are legal. Yes, wrist locks are, of course, legal. In, like, all grappling tournaments, blue belt and up pretty much. And uh, all MMA as well. Now, UB Dory, one or two finger locks isn't. You got to have all four, I believe. Um, so what he's doing here would be acceptable. Yeah, yeah. All of them are legal, but they never do it. No. Now, just because me and Seagull and Remy martial arts one on one, and maybe Lenny Sly and a couple other guys around the world, this tall uh, guy in Japan and a few others have the real stuff to make Akido work. The reason the rest of them can't make it work, well, that's on them, isn't it? Now, if we can, that's on all the haters why they can't make anything work because they're sucky keyboard warriors. No. Let's take it's a true. break. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you have to fight somebody to end it immediately, but in the case that you can't end it immediately, you never let him fight his style. Don't let him fight his style. Try to end it immediately. Wholeheartedly agree. Right. Yes. You always will break his rhythm. Hmm. I wonder who has talked about breaking his opponent rhythm, fighting with blitzes and switches and switch stance combinations, being an off rhythm blitz fighter. Something I think Oliver could learn a lot from. Hopefully, he will pick some more of that up. And his timing so that he can't fight his style. We teach all the beginners to find a rhythm, to find a certain rhythm. But then at some point you need to learn how to break the rhythm. Mm. So you don't you break their rhythm. Yeah, yeah. He's saying break my rhythm. Oliver's saying the lower level thinking of break my rhythm. Well, okay, you can learn kind of that in Muay Thai, little bounce and all that. Seagal keeps his head flat all the time. Keeps his center strong, his spine strong all the time. But anyway, on the rhythm, it's not just my rhythm. It's offsetting the other guy's rhythm by breaking my rhythm. I'm breaking their rhythm. Learn my neo striking system. Look at all my playlists. And not let them break your rhythm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're the aggressor, it's pretty hard for them to break your rhythm. In our style, we are completely offensive. So Stephen's trying to push away that no, all Akidokas aren't these love, peace, harmony, 70s BS stuff that it turned into. He's saying, I was taught to be aggressive. Now, he might wait for someone to actually attack him, but he's going to take that as a very serious thing. And as you get older, it's not like you're kind of looking for fights and hanging out at bars and stuff. But if someone attacks you, it may very well be for real. And you may have to protect your wife, your children loved ones and good people all around you, then it's game on and you have to act with full force aggressiveness depending on uh, the level that is needed. I teach up and down the different levels of force to different types of attacks or just an angry guy pointing at you versus grabbing you versus grabbing you to punch you right away, first sucker punch, first all these kinds of things. You have to go up and down to um, use the appropriate level of force, but you retake control of the outcome by being basically the counter aggressor just like with handguns the counter aggressor as soon as someone makes their attack you're just going to respond and get above um, in front of it okay to control the outcome hmm. completely aggressive we don't wait and watch and try to get them tired we don't do any of that what do you think about that as a pro fighter oliver because usually you want to feel your opponent out i think uh it's dangerous to start to feel the other guy out because it is. then, he, yeah, because then he can impose his rhythm on yes. you before you and get he the gets chance to attack to... first. Yes, and that's how I feel as well. Now, great fighters like Anderson Silva and others always took the first minute just to feel the guy out. Me, I like to get in their head right away. One, one, two, seven, eight. Boom, up jab, calf kick, inside calf kick. One, two, jab, long hook, right low kick. Oh, now switch punch series. Now long hook series, and then takedown attempts. Energy efficiency. Yeah, it's all there. Got it all there. I like to go, and then right before my opponent's going to go, I go again, and right before he's going again, I steal his rhythm, and I jump my rhythm right as he's about to go. It's right in his head. Boom, I go. And you keep doing that as someone, they, they don't know what hit them.
they get so tired and they get so frustrated. That's my new striking system. That's kind of what they're dabbling on here about rhythm and Oliver saying, don't let the other guy get in control first. I like to get in control um, right away. MMA or street self-defense. As soon as a guy attacks you, I'm going to now take control of it. As soon as there's t uh, physical contact is needed, I will de-escalate, de-escalate, de-escalate. As soon as physical contact needed, it might be a Yubi Dory, and hey, you better stop it, or switch it to a Kodigishi if I can't break his finger, which I've done before for real, um, because I don't want to get sued for that broken finger. Things are a lot more liable uh, nowadays, so you put them on a Kodigishi, put them up on one foot, and go, you've been a bad boy, and I know more than you. And really, in real life, if you want to end it immediately, you have to attack first. Yeah. That's better. Right there, man. How about in the eyes of the law? If you look like uh, the aggressor... I don't want to sound terrible because... Well, you're above I, the law. He's above the law. Oh. Used to be a police officer. Oh, yeah, that's true. But I don't care no. about the law. No. If I have to fight, I don't care about the law. Yeah. And in Steven Seagal's position, as a guy that has been so attacked by the media and certain segments of society that are now taking over more, whether that was warranted or not, it, and it really does kind of seem like a hit job, they've got everyone thinking bad on him. And if some crazy person is manipulated by that, and there have been mob and other people that have been angry at him in the past, there could be very real death threats. So he has to take any attack that comes with any real physical uh, intention right away uh, with some more seriousness as a possible assassination attempt than your everyday Joe has. Myself, I teach people to use the minimal force necessary, take them down, control them, uh, get the police there, uh, arrest somebody if you have to as a civilian, whatever, depending on the situation. That's something very important to learn. So I see what he's saying, but I also, I teach the gamut up and down the force matrix or level of force needed. Yeah. I care about ending it quick. Because, for example, you go to punch. When your punch comes, yes. if I do this, a lot of guys do this. This is yeah. not real karate. Yes. Real karate would be more like this. Force my rule. Mm. Okay? But when you Instead get really good, it yes. would be like this. Like I teach my 52 right. series. Anyway, boom, and now he's in. He took the center line. That's like yeah. the spear. It's like your yeah, kick. This is square. Now, I don't think most people could make that work. Do I think he could make it work? Probably, and especially when he was younger. And he still moves very good with a strong center. He never gives up, and he doesn't jump around and bounce around. He keeps his head center and his spine strong. Even in his movies, till today, it's still there. Square. I'm sorry, this is yes. square. This is triangle, and this is circle. Mm. Yeah, exactly. They would always say hands, knees, elbows, feet, and dag. So this. Yes. Now, he's going to start showing how to use the spear hand. We're here. Mm. Now look we at the triangle forward when he stepped on the mm. foot. You guys and this would actually be the dagger that a samurai Very similar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar to your Kali or Filipino martial arts. That I like. I do spear in the throat and I teach the neck notch takedown and stuff like that. Using uh, fingers to striking implement other than the eyes and the neck, like into the ribs and stuff, that, that's a lot. I'd rather just punch the guy. Um, but in the neck and the eyes, I can see that as being viable. And I'm coming in here and in here. Mm. Once in a while, we'll come in here. And you yeah. can feel that, right? I, I mean, can. This, this, yeah. because I train it every day. Yeah. This, you know, is very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can imagine if I did that in your throat. Oh, yeah. Oh, muscles in there. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready, right? <laughs> he got Kirill good that time. I believe that's his name. Got him good. Bomb in the throat. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> but that's his job. Interesting job. Sensei Seagull. Do you need somebody else? So if he comes with these wild one on the side, yeah. I'll cut the hole here. And now this I don't like because this uh, Shomanuchi style, no one attacks with this, simulating a knife to the neck. Nobody really does that. And they're stepping with the lead leg, right hand, right attacks. That's the problem with Akido and Filipino martial arts and Arnis and Kali and JKD guys. Huh, I'm Southpaw, the other guy's Southpaw. How many MMA fights do you see where both guys are Southpaw? Very, very few. And usually that's only at the very highest level. 
on the street, guys fight with the right hand back because most guys are right handed. That's how most people fight is with a strong side back, not strong side forward. And now we see everybody demoing right lead or these guys stepping with the right lead or stepping with the lunge punch. That's when stuff falls apart because of the not realism of the attack. Yeah. Yeah. At the, the throat throat. Throat. One of the worst strikes I've seen, two children fighting in a karate tournament. Yeah. Punch in the throat. She spit her mouthpiece out, walked two steps and then just collapsed. Did she die or? No, uh, she was carried out on a stretcher. Yeah. Stretcher, yeah. Uh, and it was just. But this, that's what this, we do. Yeah. This we, everything we do is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will sever the brains. Sever the brains. It's when a security. Now that it's when could a security be interesting. Suddenly uh, you know, in his takedown defense, he shows later that could definitely be. Uh, Pretty interesting. Let's go on. Hmm. You will sever the brainstem. Mm. That's what happens. Mm. That's why when people, like for example, when you come to grab my leg, I'll hit you in the- Oh, interesting. You, you go for a tackle, boom, palm strike eyes. Did somebody teach that? 2009, early days of YouTube, combat jujitsu. My first 45 short one to three minute videos got, I don't know, about 18 million views now. Yeah, that was my takedown defense against the tackle or double leg, um, the, the high waist tackle, okay? And I showed it there and against the bear hug. So you can see that in my videos going back to 2009, isn't that interesting? I have other footage of Seagull showing that at other times as well in my Steven Seagull takedown defense video. The eyes like this on the way down. Yeah. As you come here, I'll hit you here. By the time you're done here, look what's exposed. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's your brain still. Boom, boom. But really, I don't care this you will give a shock. You're dead. And yeah. people the only will be down crying that we will do because yeah, they would get a nerve spike. Nicer. Someone like me <laughs> could paralyze them. <laughs> a lot of grapplers that could paralyze them even big because we've had so much damage and bone spurs near the cervical spine. But it'll give you a shocking jolt just to do that if you're coming down at it at all. And even just a palm strike like that on the top of the head can really do quite a bit. Uh, a bit to use what wrestlers call a stinger. Psst, down, I get them way too often nowadays. People down uh, like this. What is your? Can you time it? I don't know, but it's easier to time it if you have your hands on the center line. And when I grapple from my chi chi chow or distracting hands matrix up and down, fighting that way with distracting hands, or one hand's already down to block low, to down block, or to cross face, or to move, rotate their head around. Well, there's already always one there, or if you're someone who fights the very center line, and you move off the center line, and you fight from this uh, center, more self-defense style, or the way Seagal's standing, or in sole position with your pistol going through a crown. I just had a video on from the Secret Service Sul, S-U-L, position. Method for power generation, because I've heard so many different ways of generating power. I would Practice. Pra yeah, of course. Practice. <laughs> yeah. And meditation. Oh, okay. Mm. And Zen. How does meditation and Zen... then we're going to have to... Okay. Practice, practice, meditation, and Zen for power. Uh, now, Sensei Steven wants to get a little deeper. And, you know, he is an older gentleman now. He's been doing martial arts a very long time. Okay, yeah, yeah let's mm -hmm. sit down. One of my masters once said... Which means real buge is like lightning. It is the culmination between energy between heaven and earth and an explosion when they meet. That's beautiful. <laughs> Chi. Look at my Keto verse MMA and some of the takedowns I do and the, some of the stuff I do and my Tai Chi Bakwa push hands takedown I do, even on a wrestler. Um, pretty interesting stuff. But especially warriors going into battle could kind of center themselves. I even trained with an Israeli, former Israeli commando. When he usually moved, it looked kind of off balance and not very good, but he would occasionally focus and move quickly and it was there. It was very interesting. So some people can center this, especially before going into uh, combat, if they knew they had to do a SWAT entry, house entry, things of that in the modern era, they could be ready to go and the nervous system firing a little bit faster for quicker reactions.
flowing through you. Ah. Mm. So it's not what I would call relaxation. It's it's that it's the lightning already coursing through mm -hmm. your body. It's there. That electricity is already coming out of your hands into your mm. eyes. You know. Mm. What was it in the? Which only happens if you have a strong spine which if you already studied judo and got a black belt in judo and you learned strong upright posture before you learned the flower power of Aikido that it became, then maybe you could actually make your Aikido work like me and Sensei Seagal and Remy and a few other people around the world can. Why the other turds can't, I don't know, but all the keyboard warriors, you're all turds too. Get in the dojo and actually train for a long time. Show some dedication. Sashi that said, Miyamoto Musashi said, yeah. make your everyday stance your fighting stance, make your fighting stance your everyday stance. What did you just see? Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. You'll see me standing like this all the time. Yeah. One great samurai once said, when a tiger dies, even though we have... Now, as a bouncer, you know, I'm working armed security, 27 years, I have learned all about de-escalation and ways to stand. Hulse and Gracie had me doing this sideways and things and cross arm and how to put up a fence and learn all those de-escalation tactics I teach on my DVD. We appreciated him in life. We take his pelt and we hang it on the wall and that's what he's remembered by, his pelt. Mm. When a real warrior dies, he has to be remembered by what he did in life. His technique, his waza, his ability and desire to teach. Ability and desire to teach, to pass on. It seems lately, and on um, Scott Atkins, you know, the guy I challenged or didn't challenge, you should probably watch that video on Viking Samurai's channel. Um, Scott Atkins, the actor, um, when he had Sensei Seagal on his show, he also showed this kind of more mature philosophical Steven Seagal. So that's very interesting. Mm. And what he left his students and what he left the world. The value of karate is of what it does to you as a human being and changing you mm. as a human so he's focusing more on a lot of this other stuff he's trying to pass on. Now, the karate nerd is a receptive person of that coming as a traditional karataka. But perhaps he's thinking about trying to leave on a legacy as he's also not liking the watering down like I don't and the other people of the older, tougher generation don't like the watering down of martial arts, including Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, even MMA, because I came from the no-holds bar days with knees and kicks to the head and no weight classes. When I first fought, they just like switched it from none to three weight classes, you know? So, um, you know, we kind of don't like the watering down, and I think he's trying to convey that the higher level reasoning, but if you do really need your skills, you may really, really need them. Being understanding that the development of the physical man and the perfection of the spiritual self are the same. And that in doing these things simultaneously, we learn first and foremost how to make the world a better place and help yeah. others. Now, let's try to focus on Steven Seagal as the martial artist. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. That is what we call a legacy. Yes. And it's another reason why I'm doing this interview. Yeah. Because, because even if early on some of the things people have said about him were somewhat true or he was rough with certain people, I don't know. But it does seem there was a bit of like a coordinated attack. And we certainly, I've worked in Hollywood. I have felt that myself. And so have other uh, actors that have spoken out about it. Even Chris Van Dam, just uh, uh, John Claude's son, spoke about it on Viking Samurai's channel. Kind of the dirty seediness, and you kind of got to pull away and do your own thing, or or you have to sell your soul. And certainly musicians, certain people have talked about that, and that's a very very dirty world is Hollywood and uh, the music industry and the news industry, which is now totally corrupt, all lies and uh, sellouts. So you know, keep in mind that maybe he was indeed targeted. Was some of that warranted? I don't know. I wasn't there 30, 40 years ago. Uh, I don't know. And the man he is now maybe isn't the man he is then, just like with John Claude or just like with any other movie star.
because in America, you have guys like Jean LaBelle. And now he goes on to talk about some other guys and people that have badmouthed him, he thinks, in the past. And he talks about his legacy, and that's pretty much the end of the really martial talk. And maybe he'll live and maybe he won't. I don't care. Yeah. So you see, he's very serious about his self-defense, just as I am very serious. Now, I've de-escalated fights and guys in bars more than any other human being alive, just like I've probably sparred more pro MMA fighters, really, than any other human alive, because I did it for 20, 22 years, when everyone else's, their bodies were already broken. I did way too much on my body, when I wasn't even getting paid to be a sparring partner. You can look at that video, what it was like to spar UFC heavyweight and light heavyweight champions on Viking Samurai's uh, channel as well so anyway guys i'm dan the wolfman please look at my aikido verse mma video it's like 26 minutes of me using certain skills and wrist locks in live jujitsu and a little bit of live mma sparring and most of those guys were pro fighters pro fighters and jujitsu people they're the best at hand fighting that should be able to avoid that stuff and standing uh, Udi Garamis and, and stuff like that. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think. Should I do uh, another video on the breakdown of the second one that uh, Jesse Enkamp and Oliver did with Sensei Steven Seagal? Steven Seagal, should you reach out and talk to Dan the Wolfman? Should I be the one who remakes movies like Above the Law and Out for Justice, not uh, little Indonesian guys that might remake Under Siege? You know, the guy with strong stature and physical ability and real ability to actually move other bodies as opposed to someone that would be getting thrown all around. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know down below. Please like, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye now.